let's talk about Top Fuel from Heathcote. A little country racetrack 100 clicks outside Melbourne, Australia, and just 18 months ago was a rundown old quarter mile ready for a new lease on life. I'm Dan Bennett, and welcome to Nitro Mouth. Right in the middle of the pandemic, Lance Warren, an ambitious businessman and drag racer, finalised the purchase of Heathcote Park Raceway in country Victoria. Heathcote last featured top fuel dragsters in 1989 and fell off the championship drag racing schedule soon after, becoming more or less an independent track that ran smaller events. Heathcote always looked like it had the potential to be a strong quarter mile facility for the state of Victoria if someone was willing to take it over and upgrade it. For over a decade, Victorians lobbied for a new drag strip close to Melbourne as it was becoming obvious that Calder Park was a degrading facility where upgrades were virtually non-existent and a lack of communication made it difficult for Victorian drag racers to get behind their local track. Heathcote is the ultimate operation drag strip. Warren and his team went to work during 2021 reviving the expansive Heathcote Park Raceway property with the intention of a complete resurface, new concrete barriers, safety nets, return roads, and all the necessary safety features to make the track race ready for championship level drag racing in 2022. And on May 21st, Lance and his team would throw open the gates to Australia's top fuel teams and a huge show for round five of the Burson Auto Top Fuel Series as part of the Summonat Slam. The event featuring burnout exhibitions, a show and shine, and fireworks, and the motorsport carnival format works extremely well in Australia. The track resurface was only just complete the previous weekend, and so everyone was aware that this was going to be a green track, but I think we can all agree, the event was an enormous success and the facility was at full capacity on both days. With six of Australia's best top fuel teams competing, Low ET of the event was a soft 4.00 ET over the 1,000 foot, with all but one of the teams dipping into the 4.0s during eliminations. But the potential of this track is incredible, and come October, when Top Fuel and other professional categories return here, more rubber laid down and more time to finesse the track surface, Heathcote Park will be up to speed. After their horrific start line incident two weeks prior in Sydney, Jim Reed Racing received a hero's return to the track, thankfully, with all injured crew members recovering and willing to continue. And while it wasn't the best weekend for Phil Reed, their 408 was in the same 4.0 second window as the other teams on the property. Reed would finish runner up in the B final after overpowering the track. For Team Rapasada, Damien Harris and Wayne Newby found that 4.0 window that the track would hold with Newby winning the B final at 4.03 after running 4.04 and 4.05 in the previous two rounds. Newby left Heathcote with the fastest average ET of eliminations at 4.04. Phil Lamartino wrestled his Fuchs Lubricants Dragster down the fresh Heathcote blacktop to win the event with a big time pedal job in the final, running a 4.43 to dispose of Peter Zibris. In the process, becoming the first two time winner this season, and putting a lock on winning both Victorian rounds of the championship. We had a couple of minor issues with the car before the final, and they were playing on my mind, said Lamartina, but I cleared my mind and just did my job. Don't think too much, just drive, and I just drove the wheels off it. It got out there, shook, I pedaled it, and it hooked back up, and I was just on it. After round five at Heathcote, Peter Zibris holds on to the points lead by just 10 on 460 points, with Phil Lamartina's strong win edging him up to 450. Damien Harris sits in third with 335 points after taking home bonus points for low ET and Wayne Newby barely 5 points behind his teammate. As if the weekend already wasn't big enough, Top Fuel Australia announced next season's calendar with the circus travelling to Alice Springs and Tail and Bend for the first time. The Alice Springs round promises to give us a dramatic backdrop of the Aussie desert, while the Tail and Bend facility in Adelaide nears completion in what will be a state-of-the-art track similar to Sydney and Perth's stadium layout. 
The Bursan Auto Top Fuel Series heads north to Darwin for the season finale, where the series will run as part of a huge triple header weekend with the Supercar and Australian Superbike Series at the Darwin Triple Crown. This is the equivalent of an NHRA event crossing over with a NASCAR Cup race to make one mega event. Who do you think will win the Australian Top Fuel Championship? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more great motorsport videos. I'm Dan Bennett and thanks for watching.